For many years, nobody knew what was going on. Once upon a time, the United States government refused to confirm the existence of Area 51, despite the fact that it was one of the most well-known military outposts in the world. As early as 1941, during the Roosevelt administration, scholars investigated the shocking discoveries confronting a president preoccupied with World War II. The explosion of UFO sightings during the Truman years, first contact during the Eisenhower administration, and the possibility of a UFO connection to the Kennedy assassination. By supporting Robert Emenegger's documentary on the subject in 1975, the Nixon administration came dangerously close to acknowledging the reality of extraterrestrial craft. The involvement of every modern president, up to and including Joe Biden, as well as the growth and subsequent decrease of their influence on UFO concerns, are being made public for the first time. Join us as we explore the alarming UFO proof that Trump has recently revealed to the public. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was the United States inaugural leader to acquire first-hand information on the study of unidentified flying objects in history. We also know that as the media continued to report on the issue, President Truman became highly involved, although our presidents kept most of the topic private. After Dwight Eisenhower won the 1952 presidential election, outgoing President Harry Truman let him in on a little-known fact. The United States had tested the first hydrogen bomb in the Pacific only days before the election. The country had acquired a weapon nearly a hundred times more potent than anything before in its possession, and almost no one was aware of this. The Eisenhower administration passed along its own secret to the Kennedy administration when he took office eight years later. The United States was secretly planning an invasion of Cuba. Kennedy approved the Bay of Pigs operation, which ended up being a disaster that brought the world dangerously close to nuclear war. In addition to having more access to classified information than any other citizen, the President of the United States also has the ability to know more about the globe than any other person. The United States has spent trillions of dollars to give its President more information than anybody else on the planet. This information is intended to help the country in international talks, military maneuvering, and more in a myriad of other ways. While many of the specifics remain hidden, which is of course the goal, we know a great deal about the kinds of secrets a president learns due to decades of tenacious reporting, lawsuits, declassified documents, and historical archives. The president's ability to authorize CIA and Pentagon drone strikes using the Predator and Reaper is a relatively new responsibility. Executive Order 123333 prohibits the targeted killing of political opponents. But both Obama and Bush had great flexibility in targeting individuals they believed were terrorists in countries like Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, Iraq, and Afghanistan. The incoming president is always given a thorough briefing on the methodical, secretive, and unlawful use of force and judicially unchecked procedure for carrying out kinetic attacks. The most sensitive secrets of the United States fall under the Special Access Programs or Sensitive Compartmented Information, labels colloquially known as Beyond Top Secret. These special access programs include information like specific National Security Agency technological surveillance, whereas most people think of classified information as falling under the broad categories of confidential, secret, and top secret. Obama was briefed on the combined United States-Israeli plan to cripple the Iranian nuclear program. Using cyber attacks like the Stuxnet worm during one of his earliest such meetings, Eight years later, the National Security Agency and its allies in the United Kingdom and Israel have at their disposal even more sophisticated means of surveillance and disruption. Leaks from Edward Snowden showed that U.S. intelligence routinely monitored the communications of foreign authorities, including German Chancellor Angela Merkel and other top business leaders from around the world. Information concerning which foreign officials are being paid by organizations like the CIA and the Drug Enforcement Administration would also be included in such ultra-secret files. 
When President Jimmy Carter found out that the CIA had been paying King Hussein of Jordan six and seven figures annually for nearly two decades to maintain his cooperation with American interests. He was horrified to learn that these payments could go into the millions and endure for years. It is just customary practice for presidents not to inquire about the identities of individual sources. The DA's drug fighting activities have given it a global presence and to maintain that presence, the agency has collaborated extensively with foreign governments and used its own formidable surveillance technologies. According to WikiLeaks revelations, for example, in 2009, the leader of Panama reportedly demanded that the CIA employ a wiretapping tool, dubbed Matador, to find out who was sleeping with his wife. The purpose of these statutes and regulations is to give the president authority that the people aren't aware he has and or at least aren't likely to learn about until a time of crisis. The president has access to what is known as Q clearance material from the Department of Energy. In addition to the nuclear football, the suitcase carried close to the president by a military aide that holds the nation's nuclear war plans. Information such as weapon stockpiles, damage estimates, technological specifications and launch procedures for the country's nuclear triad, bombers, submarines and ICBMs housed in silos are all part of the operational details of the nuclear weapons program. The National Reconnaissance Office is a top-secret intelligence agency whose very name and existence were classified from its creation in 1960 until 1992. So the president receives briefings on its constellation of spy satellites and detection technologies that watch the Earth from above you. Only if he specifically requests them, though. Not quite at the read the newspaper over your shoulder level. Depicted by movies like Enemy of the State, the nation's surveillance satellite capabilities are reportedly far more advanced than the public thinks one such aircraft. A stealth version of the Black Hawk was only made public when it crashed during the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan, and its existence has never been acknowledged. Conspiracy theorists allege that the government is holding a fleet of captured UFOs at Area 51 in Nevada, where such aircraft are regularly tested. Its portrayal as a safe haven for aliens and their spaceships in the 1996 blockbuster film Independence Day helped solidify this idea in the public consciousness. It a presidential determination issued by President Bill Clinton the previous year contributed to the secrecy surrounding the project by declaring it exempt from environmental disclosure rules in response to a lawsuit. However, the document never 51 by name. Instead, it referred to the Air Force's operating location near Groom Lake, Nevada. Dr. Jeffrey T. Richelson, a senior fellow at the George Washington University National Security Archive, filed a Freedom of Information Act request in 2005 for details about the CIA's Lockheed U-2 plane reconnaissance program, which involved the covert construction and testing of spy planes used for intelligence gathering. This led to the public discovery of Area 51 in August 2013. Documents detailing the development of the U-2 and a 12 ox cart, as well as the military base in Nevada where they were tested, were declassified in response to the request. There certainly was, as you would expect, no discussion of little green men here. Richelson, who died in 2017, told the New York Times in 2013. This is a history of the U-2. The only overlap is the discussion of the U-2 flights and UFO sightings, the fact that you had these high-flying aircraft in the air being the cause of some of the sightings. According to the declassified documents, the site was used as a testing ground for aerial surveillance programs, like the U-2 spy plane, which was first used during the Cold War. Experts estimate that the United States operates at least a dozen additional aircraft, that have never been officially acknowledged by the government. However, no aliens nor UFOs are mentioned. Furthermore, the president would be aware of any captured UFOs from Roswell or any close encounters. While the days of actual czars have passed, 
the White House has done a commendable job of keeping the function, or at least the honorific, alive by designating a director to supervise a particular task or issue and awarding the title along with it. There have been czars for everything from Ebola to drugs to finances to climate change. At a press conference held last month in Washington, D.C., NASA announced the appointment of the first UFO czar in the history of the United States and, by extension, the entire planet. Both of those phrases are rarely used outside of NASA. To begin with, the topic of unidentified flying objects is becoming increasingly taboo, at least among those who wish to be taken seriously. The term has been synonymous with such hoaxes as Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, and the idea that the moon landings were staged. Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon UAP has replaced earlier variations on the theme. Another too casual phrase for work that the space agency prefers to remain grave was Tsar, which NASA did not use. Instead, the full name for the new job is Director of UAP Research, and the man tapped to do the work is Mark Machinerny, a former Pentagon liaison for NASA, who for the better part of 25 years, has been on the government science beat. Serving in multiple positions at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, the National Hurricane Center, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. McNerney will be responsible for investigating the sightings. If the vehicles are extraterrestrial, this will help advance science. If they are foreign military craft, this will help defend national security. His options are plentiful. More than 120 UFO sightings have been reported over the past 20 years and many of these sightings involve objects that appear to be flying without any discernible means of propulsion and to be able to do fast, head-snapping maneuvers that no conventional devices are capable of U.S. military pilots, who most people would consider to be completely trustworthy, have reported seeing the objects. The government's fascination with UAPS has a long history. To investigate this phenomenon, Congress created the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program Task Force in 2007. However, the group failed to achieve any concrete findings and was eventually disbanded in 2012 due to financial constraints. However, reports of UFOs continued, so in June 2020, as part of a massive COVID-19 relief bill, President Trump ordered the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense to work together on their own investigation. A little under a year later, they sent back a report with more disappointing results, at least for those hoping to detect extraterrestrial intelligence. There was no proof that the objects weren't from another planet, but there was also no evidence that they were. Despite the fact that the chiefs of intelligence and defense are unlikely to leak the beans, the possibility that they were friendly classified you. Yes. Military vehicles out for a beta test spin was ruled out. The research suggested that the vehicles could have originated in Russia or China due to those countries' well-documented forays into hypersonic technology. As a result, we still don't know what those mysterious objects are. The responsibility therefore fell upon NASA. The space agency stated in October 2022 that it would be forming its own UAP study team. This team would not be tasked with determining the nature of the flying objects, but rather with developing a system of ongoing investigation and reporting. Retired astronaut Scott Kelly, who in 2015 and 2016 spent nearly a year aboard the International Space Station, Anamaria Borea, a research affiliate with the SETI Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute in Mountain View, California, and David Grinspoon, a senior scientist at the Planetary Science Institute in Tucson, Arizona, are among the 16 members of the panel, which was announced three months later. The group released their 33-page study a month ago, ahead of their press briefing. The report urged NASA, among other things, to collaborate with other government agencies to better understand the nature of UAPs, both in the past and the future. Using the space agency's technological prowess, experts on the panel suggested using satellite observations, 
machine learning, and artificial intelligence to improve the search for and understanding of the objects. NASA agreed with the report's recommendation that a single someone be appointed to oversee all of this work, and they made the appointment of a director of UAP research public knowledge. However, out of concern for his safety, they initially withheld the identity of this individual. It's not as unlikely as it sounds that we would be here, with the most advanced space agency in the world conducting research that may, at least in theory, lead to the finding of intelligent alien species. Famous politicians have been coming forward to acknowledge for years that there is something strange about all the air travel going on. In 2021, Harry Reid, who was majority leader of the Senate in 2007, when the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program Task Force was established, said, I believe it's just as if we were starting airplanes. Airplanes were not understood very quickly. UFOs fascinate people who are pilots and physicists because they can't understand how these UFOs have no vapor trail, no lights on them, yet they can go so fast. During her 2016 presidential campaign, Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton responded to a question from a reporter about what she would do to investigate UAPs if she were elected. I want to open the files as much as we can, she answered. There's enough stories out there that I don't think everybody is just sitting in their kitchen making them up. For this bit of frankness, she was dubbed the first ET candidate on social media. On the topic of UAPs, Former President Barack Obama told talk show presenter James Corden in 2021, what is true, and I'm actually being serious here, is that there is footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Before a highly anticipated intelligence report to Congress on so-called unidentified aerial phenomena later that month, this was the former president's second public discussion about UFOs around that time. In his most recent interview, Obama was asked what he would do if it turned out that UFOs were indeed alien drones, operating from afar. In such a what-if scenario, humans would be aware of alien existence, but would be unable to make contact. When asked how this realization may affect his politics, Obama replied, because my entire politics is premised on the fact that we are these tiny organisms on this little speck floating out in space. His political beliefs stem from the conviction that the differences we have on this planet are real, they are profound, and they cause tragedy as well as joy. The best thing we can do is treat each other better because we're all we've got, he said. Obama didn't profess any special insight into UFOs or their history, but he did imply that definitive proof of aliens would trigger major social changes. Obama's speculation on the UFO subject came at the end of a lengthy conversation that also covered the passing of George Floyd, the election of Donald Trump, and the death and the present administration of Obama's former Vice President, Joe Biden. Even though he had access to top-secret intelligence data about UFOs while in office, the former president told James Corden that he still had no idea what they are. It's been three years since Trump, then the president said he'd heard very interesting things about Roswell, New Mexico, the site of a rumored UFO crash in 1947. Multiple events off the coast of the United States have been documented on so-called UAP films, which appear to show weird objects zipping past you, yes, warships and falling into the seas. Many of the videos have been verified as real and unexplained by the Pentagon, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, shielded by those heavy hitters, spoke out about the potential of life in space recently, without even having to be asked by the press. There's a global fascination with UAP, he said. Now, NASA has a statutory authority to look for life in the universe. NASA, do I believe there's life in a universe that is so vast that it's hard for me to comprehend how big it is? My personal answer is yes. The correctness of his solution is currently unknown, but NASA is on the case, the same organization that, in 1961, was given nine years to land humans on the moon and successfully did so in 1969, is now being granted free reign with no time limit.
countless opportunities to encounter extraterrestrial life. Evidence could result in astonishing discoveries. From Roosevelt to Joe Biden, every sitting president has learned of UFO invasions during their time in office. Many investigators have found evidence that our presidents are aware of UFOs, but they are forbidden from discussing the subject and keeping secrets considered to be matters of national security due to their oath of office. Other academics have confirmed what we already knew. The presidents were kept in the dark about key details of the phenomenon. So that it wouldn't be widely reported, scientists concur that Presidents Roosevelt, Truman and Eisenhower knew more about the phenomenon than presidents starting with Bill Clinton and ending with Joe Biden. For now, much of this information remains top secret, classified and cannot be shared with the general public. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain. Have you ever wondered what's hidden behind the curtains of the White House when it comes to extraterrestrial matters? You see, the stuff of science fiction and conspiracy theories, it's a topic that's been shrouded in secrecy until now. However, in a revelation that's rocked the world, Barack Obama has finally addressed the long-standing rumors. The whispers in the dark corners of the internet and the wild speculations that extraterrestrial life has been hidden away in some clandestine government laboratory. Could this be the moment we've all been waiting for? A disclosure that could change the course of human history as we know it. Join us as we delve into the profound statements made by former President Barack Obama, which have the power to question and transform our current knowledge and comprehension. During a recent appearance on The Late Late Show with James Corden, former President Barack Obama made a humorous remark about being informed that no hidden laboratories were examining extraterrestrial specimens when he assumed office in 2008. Although delivered in jest, his remarks kindled widespread curiosity. However, the conversation transitioned to a more serious note as President Obama discussed UFOs. He disclosed the existence of documented sightings and records of airborne objects that continue to baffle experts due to their unconventional movements and trajectories. Such records challenge our comprehension of the uncharted realms beyond our planet. Remarkably, this admission aligns with a broader shift in official government circles. After years of refuting the possibility, there is now an increasing acknowledgement that UFOs represent a genuine and perplexing phenomenon. President Obama's candid discussion about unexplained aerial encounters raises intriguing questions about the potential existence of intelligent beings beyond Earth. It contributes to the mounting curiosity and seriousness within the scientific community regarding the investigation of these sightings and the pursuit of answers to the enigmatic phenomena witnessed in our skies. It's noteworthy that the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense were mandated to furnish the Intelligence and Armed Services Committees of Congress with an unclassified report on unidentified aerial phenomena. This requirement was discreetly included in the substantial 2 trillion coronavirus stimulus bill passed by Congress and signed into law by then-President Donald Trump. For a long time, not many people in Congress paid much attention to UFOs. Harry Reid, who used to be a top leader in the Senate, was one of the few who wanted more focus on this topic. But things have changed a lot now. The government's report on UFOs is a big deal because it's the most extensive discussion of these strange things that the government has ever made public. This new openness comes after the Defense Department confirmed that some photos and videos of mysterious flying objects from 2019 are real. These objects are called unidentified aerial phenomena, and they have puzzled both experts and the public. People have been curious about these strange events for a while. Back in 2007, Harry Reid played a big role in creating a secret program within the Defense Department called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Even though it was secretive, it got a lot of attention with headlines like Glowing Auras and Black Money, the Pentagon's mysterious UFO program. Some say the program was shut down in 2012, 
but some insiders say it's still being investigated. In a 2019 interview on Nevada Newsmakers, Red proudly talked about how he got $22 million for the A-tip while he was in the Senate. He believed this money was crucial because other countries like China and Russia, especially with a leader from the KGB, were also interested in UFOs. Reid stressed how important it is to look into these phenomena and understand what they mean. For a long time, very few people in the government talked about UFOs, but things have changed a lot recently. In 2019, the Defense Department confirmed that some strange things in the sky, which they call unidentified aerial phenomena, were real. People were very curious about these objects. In the past, hardly anyone in Congress talked about UFOs, but now things are very different. The government has released some videos and a report about these mysterious flying objects. This is the first time they've talked about it so openly. Back in 2007, a guy named Harry Reid helped start a secret program to study these UFOs. It was called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or AATIP. Even though they said it ended in 2012, some people say it's still going on. Reid thought it was important because other countries like China and Russia were also interested in UFOs. In 2020, the Pentagon released three videos showing these strange things in the sky. Reed was happy about this, but thought there was a lot more to learn. He wanted the government to take this seriously and figure out what these things were. He also said the American people should know about this, especially if it could affect our safety. Some important people like John Ratcliffe, who used to be in charge of intelligence, talked about these UFOs too. They mentioned that experienced pilots and satellites saw things in the sky that were hard to explain. These objects could do things that our technology can't like flying super fast without making a loud noise. All of this attention from the government was a big change. People were excited about a report the government was going to release. They thought it might have some amazing information about these mysterious flying things. People even wondered if US presidents knew more about aliens than they were saying. In this article, we will look at the history of how presidents have been involved in UFO investigations and think about what they might be keeping secret. Over several years, the United States government has conducted investigations into UFOs, stirring public curiosity and prompting a quest for answers. In 2020, an Ipsos poll revealed that nearly half of Americans believe in the possibility of extraterrestrial life visiting our planet. UFO sightings are a global occurrence but they are more frequently reported in English-speaking countries, possibly influenced by the prevalence of science fiction films depicting encounters with space beings. The President of the United States holds a unique authority to delve into and disclose information on this matter. Classified information may provide them with insights into these perplexing encounters. An early U.S. President, who might have possessed some knowledge about extraterrestrial life was Harry S. Truman, who served from 1945 to 1953. Notably, during his tenure, the U.S. government initiated its earliest UFO investigations through two projects known as Project Sign and Project Grudge, both active in the late 1940s. Although these projects did not yield significant results, they laid the groundwork for one of the most renowned UFO investigations in history. Project Blue Book officially commenced in March 1952, just a few months before the well-known Washington, D.C. UFO incident in July of the same year. This event involved numerous reports of unidentified flying objects in the skies above the nation's capital, including sightings over the White House. This situation prompted the CIA to establish the Robertson Panel which was tasked with evaluating the findings of Project Blue Book to assess whether UFOs posed a potential threat to national security. Both the Robertson panel and Project Blue Book in the end determined that UFOs didn't present a threat. However, these investigations underscored the public's deep interest in mysterious aerial events, recognizing the need to better inform the public to prevent unnecessary alarms caused by unidentified objects. Authorities emphasized the importance of education, 
Despite these findings, public fascination with UFOs and extraterrestrial phenomena in the United States remains strong. Over the years, numerous UFO sightings, conspiracy theories and speculations continued to captivate public interest, making the subject a perennial topic of discussion and intrigue. One of the most recent and intriguing investigations into UFOs is the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which operated between 2007 and 2012, primarily during the Obama administration. Even former President Obama acknowledged the public's curiosity about UFOs, as he frequently received questions about them. In an interview with GQ magazine, he mentioned that classified UFO information might not be as exciting as some people believe. Nevertheless, the government maintains its interest in studying these phenomena. Reports of UFO sightings from the public continue to pour in, leading to ongoing investigations that could remain classified for many years, possibly even decades after the events occur. Interestingly, there is a significant community of believers who not only think that UFOs have touched down on Earth, but also suspect a vast cover-up orchestrated by the US government and military regarding the existence of extraterrestrial beings. Numerous presidential candidates, as part of their campaigns, have pledged to reveal any such conspiracy if they were to assume the presidency, yet none have succeeded in doing so. So, this raises the question, what is hindering these revelations from occurring? In the domain of UFO sightings, an interesting individual who committed to revealing all was Jimmy Carter, who later became the President of the United States in 1977. What adds intrigue to Carter's case is that he had a personal encounter with a UFO in 1969, but he didn't share his experience with the public until 1973. According to Carter, one night in 1969, he observed a remarkably vivid green light in the sky. What made this light remarkable was its apparent lack of a solid structure, almost otherworldly, and it remained suspended in the sky for about 10 minutes, presenting a captivating array of changing colors. Carter's encounter received minimal attention until 1976, seven years after the incident. And just a year before he assumed the presidency, an official inquiry into the matter found no other reported witnesses who could recall the incident. Despite the absence of supporting evidence, President Carter remained resolute in his quest for the truth. He promised to personally investigate UFOs once in office, raising the hopes of the American public that long-standing mysteries, such as the infamous Roswell incident from three decades earlier might finally be unveiled. Regrettably, when Carter assumed the presidency, his commitment wavered. He vaguely cited national security concerns as the reason for not disclosing substantial UFO-related information, leaving the public eager for more definitive answers and allowing the enigma to persist. Throughout history, the mystery of extraterrestrial life has consistently intrigued us. Consider, for example, the intriguing case of President Bill Clinton, who during his time in office took it upon himself to explore the classified records of Area 51. It was as if he steered the ship of curiosity, pointing his gaze toward the skies to ensure no alien secrets were hidden within the confines of the Nevada base. With an aura of official authority, Clinton disclosed that the mystique of Area 51 had been overshadowed by its terrestrial purpose. His declaration echoed a consensus that emerged from the declassification process in 2013. Area 51 was not a secretive haven for extraterrestrial beings, but rather a facility where advanced stealth technology was developed. As secrecy tightens around this mysterious place, it inadvertently sets the stage for wild speculation. The facility's concealed walls, guarded by vigilant security, give Area 51 an air of fascination that encourages imaginations to explore beyond reason. In an interesting turn of events, the Air Force closely monitored the viral storm Area 51 meme in 2019. They issued a stern warning, similar to a strong message from the heavens, reminding those with dreams of encountering extraterrestrial beings to curb their ambitions. 
Therefore, Area 51 stands as a significant part of the modern mythology surrounding unidentified flying objects, a place where the boundaries between reality and imagination blur. President Clinton's assertion that human innovation led to the creation of stealthy aircraft resonates, but the shadows of conspiracy and curiosity about the cosmos remains. Persist in an enduring dance of intrigue, Another prominent U.S. president with a keen interest in unidentified flying objects was Ronald Reagan. He garnered global attention in 1987 during a speech at the United Nations. In this speech, he used UFOs as a unique analogy, suggesting that in the face of an extraterrestrial threat, the tensions and disputes among nations on Earth could potentially dissolve as countries would unite to confront this unfamiliar challenge. This fascination with UFOs extended beyond Reagan. During her 2016 presidential campaign, Hillary Clinton made a similar promise to that of former President Jimmy Carter in the 1970s. She pledged to disclose the truth about UFOs to the public if she were to win the election. However, despite the anticipation, Clinton ultimately lost the election, rendering her unable to fulfill this commitment. In 2019, Bernie Sanders made a noteworthy promise during a conversation with Joe Rogan. He pledged that if he secured the Democratic nomination and won the presidency, he would disclose information about UFOs. However, as the political race progressed, Sanders chose to withdraw from the competition, in leaving his commitment unmet. Interestingly, not all presidents share the same level of interest in UFOs. For example, Donald Trump showed little enthusiasm for the subject. In a previous interview with ABC News, he expressed skepticism about the existence of UFOs, indicating his disbelief. Nevertheless, there has been speculation that his establishment of the Space Force might suggest a different perspective not publicly stated. This hints at the possibility that Trump might view the idea of extraterrestrial beings as a potential threat, despite his public stance. The existence of extraterrestrial life has long been a topic of mystery and speculation. Many have suspected that the United States government conceals information about aliens, giving rise to various theories and questions. One prevalent belief is that the government is safeguarding advanced alien technology, possibly through the reverse engineering of advanced spaceships and formidable alien weaponry. This notion raises the expectation that the U.S. would lead in global technological innovation. Surprisingly, this is not entirely the case. According to Bloomberg's 2020 Innovation Index, the U.S. ranks as the ninth most innovative country worldwide, with Germany, South Korea, and Singapore leading the pack. If the U.S. indeed possesses alien technology, it opens up intriguing possibilities. Either other countries also have access to such technology, or the U.S. is deliberately sacrificing technological advancement to maintain secrecy. Alternatively, alien technology might be so advanced that no one has fully grasped its potential. Considering the U.S. President's role as the Commander-in-Chief, these leaders have the authority to access and declassify information, including UFO-related files. Many modern presidents may have delved into these files to better understand the situation. However, the actual truth behind the secrecy might remain elusive as it could be deemed too dangerous for public knowledge or simply not worth disclosing. The year 1989 marked a significant turning point for Area 51. When Robert Lazar, who claimed to have worked there, gave an interview to a Las Vegas news station, Lazar alleged that Area 51 was engaged in housing and researching alien spacecraft, with his role involving the reverse engineering of alien technology for military purposes. Lazar's account is undeniably remarkable. He shares it to safeguard himself. According to him, he was employed at a facility known as S-4, located a few miles south of Groom Lake. At S-4, Lazar claims that they possessed flying saucers, antimatter reactors, and other technologies surpassing human capabilities. In essence, he suggests that these technologies originate from sources beyond our planet, a notion that may be challenging to fathom, but one, he asserts with certainty. Having witnessed these advancements, 
and with knowledge of the current state of physics, he deems them unachievable by conventional means. Lazar's educational and professional background, however, has proven challenging to verify. He states that he holds degrees in physics and electronics, but the institutions he claimed had no record of him. Additionally, he alleges employment as a physicist at Los Alamos National Laboratory, a facility renowned for its particle beam accelerator. And curiously, Los Alamos officials claim no knowledge of a Robert Lazar ever working there, although a 1982 phone book and a newspaper clipping from the same year do mention him. His purported employer at S-4 was the United States Navy. Lazar describes a secretive operation where government personnel would assemble near EGMG flight at Groom Lake before a select few boarded a windowless bus to reach SIV. The facility is camouflaged to resemble a mountainside, potentially to evade satellite detection. Although he was never explicitly informed about the nature of his work, he inferred it involved advanced propulsion. Upon reading briefing materials, Lazar grasped the extraordinary capabilities of the propulsion systems. These included an antimatter reactor and the use of gravity amplifiers, achieved without physical connections through wave-guided gravity waves. It took some time before Lazar witnessed one of the flying disks, but hints were abundant. Posters featuring the sport model of the flying disk were displayed, indicating their presence at S4. Eventually, Lazar observed the real flying saucer in the hangar and even saw it lift off the ground. Notably, there were multiple types of saucers, each housed in different hangars. Security at S-4 was oppressive, and Lazar insists that intimidation and fear were commonplace. Even if physical harm was not inflicted, gun-wielding guards and menacing security briefings created an atmosphere of apprehension. This fear factor, as he suggests, makes it challenging to discern the truth via polygraph tests. Polygraph tests produced inconclusive results regarding Lazar's claims, with some examiners unable to definitively establish truthfulness. This may partly be due to the psychological fear associated with the topic. Lazar, however, remains steadfast in his belief that he is revealing groundbreaking information about contact with extraterrestrial intelligence which he considers a monumental event in history. Lazar has no intention of capitalizing on his account through UFO lectures or additional interviews. He is motivated by a desire to expose what he sees as a fraud perpetrated by those overseeing S-4 on the American public and the scientific community. Do you think there is government cover-up regarding aliens and UFOs? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.